please give it up for director, producer, Brian Yuzna. How did you and, and Stuart Gordon work together on those first two movies? Well, I, Stuart was a professional. I was an amateur. But because I paid for it, I got to be the boss. Right? <laughs> the only guy that doesn't have to know anything is the producer. But Stuart used his first movie, as it was mine, first professional movie. But he, even though it was his first movie he had done, he had already been directing theater for 10 years. I mean, this guy, when he was in high school, was doing theater, you know? I was all over the place. I didn't, I came out to LA to make movies when I was in my 30s with two kids, you know? But when he started, he had already made, he had direct, he had a whole theater in Chicago. So he was a professional, it just his first time making movies, and I think that's one of the things that you see with Reanimator is that we're not used to seeing cheap horror movies, cheap exploitative horror movies, so well directed. I mean, God, you, know, you, ne you never see that, you know? And that is because he, he was a theater director and he could pull off stuff that nobody else could. I mean, what do you mean who, by could, that? who could pull off having Dr. Hill with the fake head and his ear falls off. <laughs> Nobody can make that work, you know? It's ridiculous. But in, in theater, if you, if somebody put, did a plane right here, you could make that work, because it's a sort of suspension of disbelief in live theater that's even, it's different from movies. And um, I think that, I, if you've ever seen the Reanimator the musical, which Stuart um, put on, you can really see this talent. I almost think that's more impressive than the movie. You know, I'm always fascinated by what's needed for each of the roles to make a movie. So having been in both seats or worn both hats, what would you say makes a good producer? What would you say makes a good director? I don't know. I think, I think the director mostly has to be a storyteller. I think maybe that's the main thing and with the producer. Just corralling cats, you know? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm basically I'm, a producer is involved with business. The director isn't necessarily. Um, producer has a bigger overview. The director's more of a player, you know? Um, so, I think it's real important to have a good producer. I think when you see Halloween, Deborah Hill is a big part of that. I mean, John Carpenter made a lot of movies, and you know, when he worked with Deborah Hill, there was a little, a little more going on. So, I think it, um, they are there. It depends. It's it's a hat to wear. But of course, the best thing is to produce and direct and write, and then you don't have to argue with anybody. <laughs> so when I first came out here, I didn't, um, I got involved with the documentary about Amos and Andy. Not a good topic. <laughs> you know, it was turned out to not be um, politically correct even back then. Um, and I, I got involved with selling hundreds of hours of old TV shows that had fallen into the public domain. So I was just making a living, but wanting to make a movie. Because I had tried it kind of on an amateur level, and <clears throat> I just loved the process, and I loved doing it, and I thought, wow, this is more fun than any of the other kind of businesses I've been in. And so it was, I'll throw all my chips on the table and make this horror movie and then try to make another one. And could I? You know, it was sort of like, will I ever get to do another one? You know? And then thinking, wow, it would be so great to just make a living worrying about scripts and stories and casting and locations. And, um, and so it was sort of chasing the dragon. Next question. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Mr. Yesna, um, 
One of my it's favorite. Actually Yuzna. Yuzna. Yeah, okay, Yuzna. great. Sorry, Yuzna. I've been saying it wrong all this time. Um, one of my favorite films is Society that you made. And just like with Reanimator that we just saw and we'll see in From Beyond, all these films have a tremendous sense of humor in, mixed in with the horror. And I don't see a lot of that nowadays. Either it's all out comedy or it seems like these films that are coming out take themselves so incredibly seriously. How did you find that balance working on these films and that would work, that would resonate with an audience? Well, I think I found it in Mad Magazine in the 50s, <laughs> oh, okay. which is what taught me what satire was. And I think that, I don't know, when we were working on Reanimator, I, I've always said kind of, I, I like um, kind of satire and contradictions, you know. And when we were, and Stewart never wanted it to be funny. He, you know, he would always say, it's not a funny movie. You know, but the whole time we were working on the script, we were laughing. You know, while we were shooting, we were laughing because we just got a delight out of the craziness of it, right? Right. And so I think that's, it's sort of intrinsic. I mean, it's part of my nature to like that and not everything that I've done has been, had necessarily that. I think maybe um, there's some things that weren't quite as much, but I think something like society, I mean, it's, it's all about the subversive kind of contradictions. And I think that's, I think that's where, it's not cynical, cynicism isn't fun. But I don't know, there is a certain sense of satire. Sometimes that comes out of kind of holding two opposing ideas at one time. The only way you can express it is through a contradiction, which is kind of satire. So I, I, um, I don't know, it's sort of natural to me. I like the, the under, I like the kind of digging at the contradictions and things, it just comes natural. I do agree with you that um, I don't know, I find the, the genre movies today to be so self-conscious and so self-important and message forward and, you know, and you kind of go, you know, any movie that you make, anything you do, anything you write, a song you write or, you know, any, anything that you create is going to reflect the times you're in. And if you look at it 20 years later, you're going to say, oh, that's about that. But to do it consciously and to make that be, I don't know, to me it's, it's a little depressing. It isn't, I like horror for fun. You know, I like, I like um, you know, William Castle. I like Roger Corman, you know. I like horror that is just horror, even if it's just straight horror like The Exorcist or Rosemary's Baby, or, but it just goes for it. And I've talked to people who saw Reanimator and they went, no, that was scary. And I said, I never thought that movie was scary at all. You know? It's fun. It wasn't scary, but it was wild yeah. and fun. <laughs> A theme park ride, you know? But, and horror, you know? It, from, you talked about storytelling. And I was so impressed. You were talking about how, in many ways, I, people would look down at this kind of genre and, and here's this movie that's endured for 40 years and, it, and it's so well made. One of the things I was so struck by was that classical structure of the opening scene of our hero then becomes the final scene of the movie. So he's trying to resuscitate someone and then at the end he's trying to resuscitate his love. And I, I just thought, it seems like good writing also it is raises good writing, good writing yeah. raises the, the level of a movie and I'm, I'm just wondering if you have and any thoughts And it's very on that. kind of theatrical writing. Like the story is very more theater than film. Film tends to sometimes go off on the visuals being more important than the, than the character stories. And this is that movie, you know, Reanimator, it's very simple. Like Barbara was, um, she, there was another um, actress cast for Barbara. And then she fell out when her mother read the script. <laughs> and, um, and Bruce Abbott kind of worked well with her. He's the straight man, right? 
you can't, you know, you have to have the straight man to play off of Herbert West. Was it true that you tried to get Christopher Lee? No. No, okay, we're on <laughs> No, we weren't on that level, are you kidding? <laughs> this is a cheap little movie, man. <laughs> 16 days, you know. A lot of stuff, at least the way I work, I don't work like Stewart. Stewart's a storyteller, a narrative guy that works from theater, it's about the actors. and uh, I tend to work from kind of, I try to look for inspiration from wherever I can find it and then try to back engineer it into the movie and say, well, how can we make this, how can we put this scene in the movie? <laughs> you know, so it gets a little bit more awkward. But <laughs> you have to find, it depends on who's paying for it, right? And that means that you, because Whoever's paying for it has to accept. It has to be something they want to do, you know, that they will accept. I don't, you know, most of the movies I've made because my, <laughs> because my career has ended up being very much on the outskirts of the movie business and, mo and a lot of it overseas. A lot of the movies I made are overseas. That a, I would say most, well most of the movies I've made Nobody ever had to approve my script or whatever I was doing or the cut or, you know, I just, you know, but when you're in a little pond, you know, <laughs> you can croak loud. So I, I read that you have five children? Is it four? Four children. I have three children. I just wanted to know, as, as a father who's raised uh, four children, do you have any advice? <laughs> I don't know. I took my kids all on the set. I put them all in the horror movies. I let them watch whatever they wanted. <laughs> I, they watched, and you know what? I now I, I think. Out that, no, now I think. How, why did I, how could I let them watch those movies? <laughs> my grandkids. I would never. You know? I don't know. I don't know how they got over. But they're all. They all seem normal. You know? They're all. They're all good, you know? So, I don't know, you know? It's very, very time consuming to raise kids. It is. Um, you know, you've, you've made a career in movies. I'm a movie maker. I, I have to imagine we have a lot of movie makers out here. Probably everybody out there. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Nobody right? goes to old movies except people who make movies. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I, I ask people and they're like, no, nah, I just love movies. Uh, but, but my question is, um, having, having gone, having done it, what advice do you have for people if they've decided, I'm, this is what I love, I'm going to just do this, no matter, you know, come hell or high water, I'm making movies. What advice do you have for people? Well, I mean, I think you just do it, you know. I mean, today, it's not like it was when I was starting out where you needed specialized people, you know, you can do it with your iPhone or whatever. Um, I think the problem, I mean, the, the, Technology, the the you know the means of making movies is like totally accessible now. I mean, crazy accessible. You can make them. I mean, I know people who make movies for 15, 20 grand and then make money on it. You know, but you've got to make something that is commercial. <laughs> if you, you know, for me, I always I always wanted to make money doing it. If you don't make money, it's a hobby, which is fine too. I mean, a hobby is good. But usually we want people to watch it. If you write something, you want somebody to read it. If you make a song, you want somebody to listen to it. If you make a movie, you want somebody to watch it. And sort of, if they pay for it, if you can make money off it, then you figure you've got some kind of an audience. And I think that it's not really the budget, the problem, with no budget is people won't show up to work. <laughs> if you don't pay them, they don't show up. You, you, you may have get everything set up and, oh, you know, I had to go do this or, you know. I mean, if you don't pay people, they don't, you know, that's a problem. Like even with Reanimator, you know, we switched DPs in the middle of the movie. After a week, we changed the director of photography not because the one we had was was bad, but because we weren't going to get through the movie because he wasn't, he kind of couldn't really 
stand up to Stuart, who was used to being the, you know, the god king on a theater stage. And we got a very, uh, you know, uh, a very experienced Swedish DP who then was really able to demand Stuart's um, respect. And when he, and, and he would get Stuart to get what we call coverage. <laughs> so you had something to edit. And you could, with you Stuart could, trying to shoot the whole movie in masters. Well, you know, Stuart had read a bunch of Hitchcock stuff where Hitchcock said, well, you just don't shoot anything that you don't want in the cut or else the, you know, the, the suits will screw up your movie. You know, that's one of the big things with, with movie making is they think, oh, the people who finance it are assholes that are just trying to keep the man, keep you down. You know, the man's trying to keep you down because they all they care about is money and all this. It, 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 it is true in some ways, but it's kind of bullshit. The people who are paying for it are your best friends, you know. And um, but there is this idea, well, I'm only going to shoot what I want in the cut so that nobody can come in and cut the movie the way I don't want it cut. But you need the coverage. <laughs> You've got to be able to let the editor cover. But so you have to trust people, and you need professional people, and people with a lot of experience. And I think that's what, that's the pro, that's what you don't get when you're making an amateur movie. You're getting everybody to be in the same movie. And that's the thing that Reanimator has. Everybody in that movie is in the same movie, and that's a tribute to Stuart Gordon. He, you look at that movie, no, you know, you watch a lot of movies, and you go, you know, especially low budget <coughs> stuff, you realize different people are in different movies. They're not all on board in the same place. In my opinion, you should be exploitative. <laughs> <laughs> because and not be about express. I mean, it's not my genre. Art movies are not my genre. I know it is a genre, but wow, it's a tough one. You know, but exploitation. I know I'm a horror fan because I love all movies, but I, I, I like the good ones. But with horror movies. I like the bad ones too. <laughs> and that's how I know I'm a horror fan. <laughs> and I know that if I'm going to make a movie, if it's exploitative, maybe the movie isn't very good. And I thought about this with Reanimator. I thought, you know what, if it's not good, at least let's not try to be respectable. <laughs> and I told Stuart that. I said, go, we got to go all the way with this movie because if the movie stinks, I know there's an audience just for going overboard. <laughs> That's being commercial. <laughs>